Good morning, everybody. This is Meredith Herrenbrook. How are you? I am with Living Your Awesome, and I thought to welcome you into this beautiful Friday. I wanted to talk to you about, goodness, rebalancing yourself. Um, you know, there's so much going on in the world that there's so much input all the time that we need to figure out how are we acting? How are we reacting? How are we keeping ourselves safe? insane with all this input of you know um, food security job security house security all those things and so I wanted to get into what my roots are I did an amazing retreat which I staff at occasionally and I have to say this very 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 simple tool but is really powerful and it will rebalance your system and um, before I get into that, I just want you to understand that when I say kind of balancing, it's kind of getting into your body is really what we're talking about. We are finding our center. Now, I'll tell you, when I was growing up, you are, you know, I was the you know youngest of three, trying to figure out my role, my place in the world, and I was having a hard time you know I was reacting I was trying to fit in trying to figure out who I was what you know what was going on and and so but as I got older and I was learning these tools which I'm going to share with you that I realized that I was out of balance meaning I wasn't focused here I wasn't focused in the middle of my body I wasn't happy I was always searching out there and when I learned these tools the more I grounded in and i'll explain all these terms um, if you're new to some of these terms when i started to ground when i started to kind of find the center here then the worries about the external world kind of went away and i was more assured in my resources my strength my calmness and when i was more calm then i could take more on i could also filter out the the greater negativity and when you can do that and find your power, which I teach my daughter um, every morning, even this morning, as a little side note, I was saying, okay, what are you telling yourself in the morning? You know, and she was frustrated and she was kind of whiny. And I get irritated very easily with that, unfortunately, <laughs> because I go, you, you need to know your worth. You need to know your value. And as a side note, that's what I think so much of this world's energy right now is, what is our value, right? What is, what is our value to ourselves and to other people? Um, and But ultimately, let's not focus on the outside world. What are we here? And how do we develop that sense of self so then we can remain calmer, more grounded, happier, etc. And so anyway, so here is when we ground the the word grounding means basically you're stomping your feet down and you are actually connecting with the energies now if you look into what grounding is it's basically we're an electrical system we are in a way a battery that we need to get recharged right um, there's even a term called earthing where you're going barefoot in the grass and so forth very physically scientifically which is really cool, I think, you know, that these things, you know, this grounding has been happening for thousands of years and, and, and mystics and so forth has, has been using these tools. But um, now we're finding, you know, more scientific proof of ions are shifting and electrons are shifting. And so when you're grounding, you're actually kind of rebalancing electrically your system. And also when you're rebalancing your electrical system, your nerves are calmer you're happier, just everything goes online. Everything is flowing better, right? Um, you know, when you have enough water in your system, well, that actually improves the battery too. So anyway, so there's this grounding. Um, there are many grounding techniques, but basically what we're doing to find your greater sense of self, your inner guidance, connecting in here, um, rather than reaching out there and being reactive and looking outside of yourself. Um, this helps you really to calm yourself and be more present. And when you're more present, then there's less that's gonna bother you. I promise you, and it's just amazing. And it takes me five minutes 
And the more you do it, the more often you do it, the better off you are. Um, the quicker you can get into that state when you get a little jolted, um, sidetracked later in the day, maybe it's you know tired after lunch or you've had a rough meeting or some little you know discourse with someone, you can reset yourself more quickly. And that's what self-mastery is about, this grounding and so forth and so on. So here's what I want to show you. There are two things actually I want to, I want to show you is one, when you are grounding, what are you doing? You're, you're sending your energy kind of into the earth. Now this is all kind of done in your mind with intention. And you go, well, does that really do anything? Well, actually try it out. It does. Okay. So just go with me. This is what yoga does. It's the breathing. It's the calming. It's your sending your energy and your intention and your focus. If your focus is 10 feet out in front of you, how are you actually physically going to be able to balance on your feet as well? If you play tennis, um, I play tennis and I love it, but if you are serving, I remember when I was learning to serve again, I was a terrible server. I was crunching up my body and collapsing into the ground and, and falling forward every time. And my coach says, well, if you practice anchoring your feet onto the ground, and not moving while you're serving as kind of a, a reset point. Do that 10 times and then you will, and then when you focus on that and, and throwing the ball properly, then you're not going to be collapsing over. So when your energy is focused in the center here, then you're not going to be falling forward, etc. So this grounding is what are you doing? You're following your intention and your focus into the ground. And then later imagining kind of this soft yellow light, people call it diaphanous. It's very, um, when you're starting out, it you're going, well, what's it supposed to feel like, right? What's it supposed to happen? It's actually a very, as I started to tune in and work on my intuition more, I was thinking, oh, it has to be a hard, thick kind of yellow energy. It's actually not. It's very light. It's um, it's kind of cloud-like. And, and once you get into that right vibration, you go, oh, that's what's going on. And then on the other thing is I was there, it had a specific spiraling energy and it was actually counterclockwise. So if you're looking at the ground and you're bringing in that earth energy, it spirals actually counterclockwise up. And, um, and so that was interesting as I tuned into it more than, um, I, I was learning that when it didn't feel right, I was having it spiral in the wrong way. Okay, so these are just tips for when you start out, you can kind of connect into the Earth's energy a lot better. So here is kind of what I have learned and had been taught over the years in these retreats and so forth. So here is this handy dandy chart here, okay? So as you are imagining grounding, so if you have your feet, bare feet, or wherever you are at work, at home, um, lounging in some amazing resort, I wish, dig your feet into the sand and just imagine kind of being here. Let's just even start with that, being here. Turn off the higher brain, stop thinking about work and everything else. And that's, you know, the monkey mind is really good at trying to solve problems and, and bring everything in right to munch on. Um, but this exercise is to really focus in on being here now. Eckhart Tolle uh, describes this, mystics describe this, is attachment and expectation and forward thinking, thinking about the future, lamenting our past. Well, that keeps us agitated, reactive, having hard times. So it's a practice. We're never going to be perfect, but it's how do we get back into that moment? So being present, being present means you're not thinking about the future. You're not worrying about the past. You're not lamenting, right? So what you do is you start taking a breath and you start to notice your body, your body here right now, and just being in this um, not a shell, but it's like being in this space and what that actually means. What does that feel like? You know, when it, with COVID, uh, starting in March, everyone kind of fritzed, right? And we're thinking about the future and we're thinking about the past. 
Okay, but uh, and we're keeping busy often so we can fill our world so we don't actually have to think about all those scary thoughts that might come in, right? That's its own practice. But for the beginning is just taking a breath and being here now. If a thought flows in, great, let it go. Don't grab onto it. Take a breath, acknowledge it, love it. If you resist it, you're going to grab onto it, right? That's going to become an attachment. So you take a breath. Okay, now notice where is your attention. It's all about where your attention is and intention is. Energy flows where attention goes. It is so true. So if you are finding yourself out of balance, if you're finding yourself frustrated, if you're finding yourself in an unhappy spot, where is your attention and why is your attention there? Does it need to be there? Kind of challenge yourself a little bit and then just let it go. Okay. So that is actually the first spot of where is your attention? Okay. Now we're breathing into our heart. Then we're going to start kind of wandering our little energy down to the bottom of our feet. Now, when, when we look at our feet, if you're going to imagine these feet, I don't have my pedicure done, so I'm not going to show you my feet, but if you imagine this is your foot between actually imagine your big toe in here, there's a spot called the bubbling spring. And it's a point, probably half an inch between the junction of your toes, where the energy, you can actually, once you start to focus on it, and it's, I think, a meridian point. There are a million little um, meridians and um, chakras, if you will, which means, chakra means spinning wheels, that the energy will kind of be pulled up, and you'll actually feel a vibration and a little... Um, like almost like an electrical tingle, which is kind of cool once you really get it going. So it will start as you start to focus on pulling the energy in. You'll start to feel this kind of come up your feet and up through your knees and through your hips. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pull in actually the earth's energy and then we're going to um, pull in the feminine energy. Now it's kind of yellow energy. It's really light. It's really airy and you'll just kind of start to feel for what it actually is it's not just a made-up thing here it's kind of trippy but as you learn this it's quite amazing so you have the earth energy the feminine energy kind of coming in and it's coming in spiraling up kind of counterclockwise up and then what we're going to do afterwards is it's going to be pulled up into your belly just beneath your belly button and now that is being pulled into your second chakra which is balancing, nurturing, um, grounding space. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is just pulling this up. And later in other exercises, which I think I wanna do this once a week with you guys because this is really where, this is really where the heart is. This is where, if you wanna master yourself and if you want to really um, become more effective in your world, you have to balance yourself and when you can really understand your own power and how you kind of operate physically, calm the monkey mind and really be, you can become more focused. And this is a very quick way of when to balance yourself, stay in the present, remember your breathing, right? If you do yoga, this is all these things that they interweave while you're working on your body, but it's, you're not just working on your body, you're working in your breath and how you're moving through those exercises and bringing that energy in. We are not just a closed system, like a little person on the earth and we're just tromping around. We are breathing and connecting into all these different energies of the trees, the, the air, the sky. Um, we are part of this whole thing. And COVID is part of the system, the energy that's happening right now. And when we can work through it, COVID won't need to be here anymore. Um, sorry, if you hear these little cheeps, we have two little chickens growing. I'm gonna actually show you because they're kind of cute. We got little chickens growing here. We have a little backyard um, chicken farm. We got little five, three other girls at home that are five and a half months old. And so we've got two, two more growing now to add to our little flock. 
Um, okay, so anyway, so this is what we're gonna do. So we were going to ground ourselves. So that's the backstory, and thank you for listening in on a little bit of that backstory of why do we do this, you know, and how it kind of operates. So what you do is you imagine just sinking into your hips and feeling the weight of your body and that our attention is going to not be up here in the solar plexus and up here breaking out like a little radio tower and all high and and you know don't imagine your don't focus on the branches so to speak if you imagine yourself a tree don't focus on up here because when you do that how are you grounded right anything that doesn't flip over has a good base it has a good strength and a good foundation right like a good building or a good tree system it has roots spread out so when you start to take a breath and notice breathing deeper into your belly and then bringing that energy up and then slowly bringing it down that when you start to kind of create roots and imagine these roots growing into the ground then you will be able to find that actually you're more stable right your focus and energy is drawing down into the earth down below and you can imagine maybe you being at the point of a pyramid that the base of your belly is at the point of the pyramid and that you're sending this energy down and and then you will be slowly bringing it up and as you do that you're starting to play with this energy that's going to sustain you you're going to have more energy throughout the day you're going to have better focus throughout the day you're going to have more presence of mind more space um, less reactivity which is fantastic so this is just a very starter um, dialogue for being more present being more grounded um, being able to be more powerful in yourself if you are react if you find yourself being more reactive and um, more sensitive more angry you know and you're not kind of riding the sine wave of just oh, okay I'm noticing I'm getting a little angry and getting back to center if you are this right then you're going to have a harder time throughout the day how do we reset and this is a really beautiful way the more you practice it it's like five minutes a day in the morning when you get out of bed stomp your feet and just imagine that energy kind of going down into the earth and saying hi I'm here I'm part of a whole system and then you're drawing that energy up and then finding your presence finding your breath breathing into the belly a little bit more rather than breathing up here I think when we're stressed we breathe into the top part you know and we're, we're contracted and we're small and this these exercises are a way to expand and be calmer breathe into our whole body and notice that we are actually a whole body I know when I get stressed and I check myself I will notice that my energy and attention is up here I'm all brain I'm all focused you know and I gotta get it done and my solar plexus is just going crazy well where's the rest of my body what you know where's my foundation it, we have to remember our feet and our legs, what we're standing on, and bringing the deeper breaths in, remembering our belly. And one way to do it is like almost rather than tapping up here, this is a great trick, is tapping your belly beneath your belly button. And you go, hey, that's right. That's where my energy should be focused throughout the day. When you're finding yourself out of balance, tap your belly a little bit. Deep, breathe into that space and you'll become more calm, present, less angry. You can ride those waves a lot better. You're focusing kind of here, not out there, and being reactive. So I've been in the past few months, I'm sure like everybody with this COVID thing, honestly, I was scared. I'm, I have nerves. Um, I'm nervous sometimes with what's going on with school. Um, for my kids, how am I going to live socially um, just all those questions and I went up and down and even this last week I got kind of sick and I go oh my gosh is it COVID no it's, it was just like a little cold I was just run down oh that's right Meredith use your tools that's right get to center and when you're in center 
everything calms down. Everything is better and calmer and then your outlook is better and your response is better and i want to teach you these things because if you get out of balance more quickly and you're more reactive you have to be powerful take care of yourself and because no one is going to do it for you they can't do it for you you know i talked to my daughter this morning and she's whining and 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 being reactive and being powerful in a way in her victimhood and i go don't be a victim Okay, so how do you not be a victim, right? It's so easy to say, don't do this. Well, what are what do you do instead? Is you tell yourself positive things. You ground yourself. Be more positive, right? Well, how do you do that? Don't focus on the negative. If negative comes into your life through media, through arguments or whatever, go, okay, that's fine. Don't resist it. Let it go through and go, okay, where's my center? I don't have to react. I'm not obligated by some edict to react, to have to do this. Okay, so where am I here? Where's my attention? And the more powerful you are in focusing and calming that monkey mind or just not paying attention really to the monkey mind, acknowledge and go, okay, fine. I see you, great, there's a thought that comes through. All right, let it go. But then you can ride these things out more beautifully. And the more we do that, the less we need to watch the media, the less we need to search out all this stuff in effort to make ourselves feel better. Um, I think in fear, we go out. Am I doing it right? Do I know enough? Do I have enough control? Do I, you know, am I, am I doing the right things, right? According to what I've learned growing up, um, et cetera, and, and what I find the solution should be. When you are calmer, you need less the outside sources to reinforce what you feel about yourself. That's kind of a big, big thing. <laughs> the calmer you are, like hermits, um, they don't need the outside sources to reinforce who they feel they are, what they believe themselves to be. And the more you look inward and the more, um, the stronger you are in knowing who you are, the less you need the outside sources. So if you're finding yourself, you know, like the branches, focusing on the branches of the tree and you're not grounded and you're not calm more often than not, then you need to kind of reset. And this is a beautiful way of resetting. So if for those who have been just joining me, I want to show you this. This is, I've been showing you guys on how to kind of reset yourself and connect into yourself by grounding and imagining kind of this yellow energy coming up from the earth through your toes, through your hips, up through your belly and grounding yourself and remembering that energy source kind of beneath your belly button. And when you focus on a lower point in your body, then you're going to be have a better foundation throughout the day. You're going to be more energetic. I promise you, you're going to be more energetic and um, more grounded, happier, um, more resourceful because more systems in your um, brain are firing and it's an awesome place to be. And I want to teach this to you because rather than being reactive in the world where I think a lot of people are, they're angry and they're mad at the outside sources, in some cases rightfully so, but at the end of the day, and I had this discussion with a friend of mine, I said, and she says, well, you know, reparations, she doesn't believe in reparations. I'm not really a fan of that, to be honest, just because I don't think that will get people necessarily what they want. I'd rather have a systemic change. I think that's more appropriate. Politics aside and everything else. But my point is, at the end of the day, how do we help people get to their own power? Is it through money or is it through really a, is it really um, to get them knowing their worth and knowing their value and living up to their highest expectations? And you know, with proper education and, and proper accessibility to things, absolutely. But we can't be powerful if we're giving it away. We can't be strong and resourceful when we're looking outside of ourselves. We can't be balanced and, and present 
when our attention is on the media or some other quote authority source when we give our power away and our attention is out there well where's our power where where are our resources you know um my daughter this morning she says well you made me distracted you know and i was trying to get her dressed and out the door and i said i made you and she says yes and and i said and i smiled and i go but where is did i make you feel that way or did you did that just come up in you did that you know you don't have to feel that way you don't have to make that assumption and granted she's only six and i'm trying to simplify it well enough for a six-year-old where it can still sink in you know i want her to feel powerful i want her to be balanced i'm sure you want this for yourself and for your children and other people i want everyone to be whole here but when we are blaming everybody else for our problems such that we are in a victim state then once they say okay we're going to give you money or we're going to give you this to make up for it but does that really help the person in the long run no because then they're going to go oh well now that i'm not a victim anymore and i have this money and i have this and okay they're cleared of their you know conscious issues and whatever and you have this perpetrator and victim dynamic then you go well now what okay that that you know that that contract's been signed i said i'm sorry or whatever and then okay well now i'm back to myself and now we have to look back at ourselves and go oh well i can't play necessarily the victim card anymore because well now i have to live my own life i have to get up out of bed i have to do those things with the proper intention to get me success in a certain way right i need a job i need to have success i need to move forward but it always has to come from us so when i'm telling my daughter don't be a victim um what i'm trying to tell her is you need to stand into your power and i'm trying to guide her into all right what do we tell ourselves I am powerful, I am strong, I am balanced, I am resourceful. Okay, now when we start to believe these things, the belief has to happen before the action, you know, I think often happens. And then we can start do those things that are creating and reinforcing what we're believing about ourselves. And that is where the power is, is when we are blaming everybody else and we are victims, well, then everyone's going to be a victim and then no one's, you know, then nothing's going to happen. We're going to stay in this, this cesspool of angst and finger pointing. Do CEOs do that? Do they blame people? No, they get off their duff. They make an action plan. They have certain belief systems about themselves where they go, great. I believe that I am powerful. If I don't have the resources, I'm going to try and find it and I'm going to learn about that and so forth and they make those action plans. And then they get to the next step. They might not know what the next step or the fifth step is, and that's fine, that's totally fine, but they are creating an action plan because they believe in themselves that they can do it, that they have the power to do it. And it all rolls back to center, presence, um, not being a victim. And, and this, I'm gonna show this one more time, when you find your center, when you find that you actually have power here, then you can go places, you can do amazing things, which I love. That, we are our own vehicles, right? We drive ourselves places. If you want to um, start a company, are you going to have somebody else do it? No, you've got to do it. You've got to think of the marketing. You've got to think of the products. You've got to think of the plan. You've got to think of all those things it comes in here right and that's what i want for people is to find their own power here and how do we do that as we break we take away the outside stuff and we start to reimagine and re reintegrate that we actually do have power that we can be resourceful that we can create 
a really amazing, almost like a tornado of energy. Um, when we're bringing this energy in from our feet and finding our foundation and breathing more deeply, our systems become more online and then we're able to ride out all that outside stuff and not pay attention to it. We don't need to anymore. So those are some thoughts today. I'm going to get into really deep stuff. I've tried to, I think, um, get into kind of the smaller, you know, how to, you know, how to feel a little bit better about yourself and so forth. Let's get into the deep stuff. And this is a deep, this is a deep thing. This is, if you want more power in yourself, ground yourself, find your source. What is it? What does it feel like? How do you empower yourself throughout the day? Do you empower yourself by looking outside of yourself? No, you go, what do I feel about myself? What do I want to get done today? Create those action plans. Use your planner and, right? How do I want to be with myself? How do I want to be with other people? We have to ask those questions and set ourselves in the morning. Every morning, even if it's 30 seconds, go, okay, I'm going to ground myself. I'm going to shift into my hips and I'm going to go, hmm, I'm just going to be here right now, not thinking about it, the future, not lamenting the past and just breathing and focusing on the breath. That's really helpful to keep your mind occupied, right? Breathing in through our nose and then out through our mouth. Oh, okay. Now everything's starting to wake up in the world. Okay. Remembering that we are not just our brains and our hearts. We have lungs and our, all of these parts of ourselves are helping us to get to our goal, whatever that is. And if you keep hitting a goal, or sorry, if you keep not hitting a goal, shift your expectations a little bit lower or, or recalibrate, right? If you keep not um, finding success, then maybe you need to reassess if that goal is attainable or if your structure is really getting you to that. Um, we just, we're always having to recalibrate and that's fine. I mean, that's, that's what it is. You know, I've been taking these classes online with Russell Brunson, who does click funnels and all these amazing things. And he says, I failed a million times. I have fallen on my ass and taken a whipping and so forth. But he used those as learning experiences. And so now he's finally hit all those things that are successful. So if you're finding things that you're not successful at, calibrate, recalibrate, tweak, um, you know, etc. But ground yourself and find that you are truly the source of your power. And when you can do that in just these five minutes a day, then when you hit these moments of when you are off kilter with a friend or a spouse and there's an argument or this, oh, what's, why am I angry here? Do I have to be angry? Do I have to, you know, and you, and you challenge yourself. And then when you challenge yourself, then you can learn to figure out the root causes, the triggers, this is why I use NLP, this is why I use HUNA, this is why I use Family Soul Constellations is, what are we believing about ourselves in the world that are getting us triggered to have this experience? If I didn't have those triggers, I wouldn't have that experience. I might have that same conversation in the beginning, but I would be able to steer through it much better and more balanced right so anyway thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it i am meredith Harenbrook with living your awesome as you see here this is my fabulous book on amazon um becoming ridiculously awesome who doesn't want that i hope this has been really helpful for you i know it's been 33 minutes of fun filled action packed lesson on grounding and finding your belief systems and knowing that here is an amazing place to be you are amazing. You are powerful. You are stronger absolutely than you can ever imagine. I wholeheartedly believe that. When I was growing up, I didn't believe that. And I thought the world was horrible and rough and terrible. And then when I started to understand my own power, the world wouldn't, didn't seem so bad. And, and I learned that the universe actually is always going your way. It is always presenting you back like a mirror on what you believe about yourself in the world. So if you want to start shifting your world, you have to start shifting your beliefs. You have to start shifting to know that you are more powerful here and that when you're grounded and you're centered and you are sourced, 
properly, not in the ego, but in a very big, greater sense of that you are part of true source, whatever that is for you. I use the word true source. Um, just it's a non-denominational thing, whatever that is, where there is absolute love, absolute power that will always give you what you need. And so if you want to be more powerful in yourself, then you have to know what your belief systems are and be consistent and go for that. And if you need help shifting that, I am here for personal coaching, one-on-one um, -on -one sessions, um, whatever you need. So I have been through a lot in my life and I have learned some great many things and I hope this grounding technique has been helpful for you. So like and share, please. Thank you for watching. This is obviously on YouTube and please look for my happiness challenge that is, I'm hoping start September 1st. I've got a lot to do in the meantime, but this is the beginning of one of the morning videos that we will be doing every morning on this happiness challenge where you're grounding, finding your power, centering, leaving the outside world where it needs to be so you can really find who you are, how you tick, and being okay with just following the breath and not having any outside sources bother you anymore. So thanks again. I will see you next time.